Welcome to this video tutorial on the main operational features used on the video mixer in Z4A3. I'll be going through and explaining the main operational features that you'll need to know. Here are a few points that we will be looking at in this tutorial. A quick overview of the SE2000 mixer. The initial check to be carried out. Audio setup and video mixing. The SE2000 has been configured to accept four digital HD SDI video inputs, a HD graphics caption input, and four analog audio inputs. The mixer only handles SDI video and will remove any embedded audio presented at the inputs. As a result of this, the audio needs to be dealt with using separate audio controls. Here is the layout of the mixer front panel. Starting from the left of the mixer, we have the four audio sources. Underneath this, we have the audio mixers. The sub-selector source is used to select the source input channels that will be transitioned or shown next onto the screen. The main selector source is used to select the source input channels that are sent to the main video program output. The T-bar is used to carry out a manual transition, such as a wipe, fade or mix. When the T-bar has travelled as far as it can go, the transition is complete. Cut forces an immediate switch between the selected main and subsources. When selected, the subsource becomes the main program output, with no transition effect applied. Take starts an automated switch between the main and subsources. When clicked upon, the selected subsource becomes the main program output with the selected transition effect applied at the selected effect speed. There are five transition speed buttons used to choose from when using the take button to switch between the preview and program sources. The audio level of each microphone is controlled by a dedicated fader found on the left hand side of the mixer. Audio testing and lineup is best done using a set of headphones plugged into a socket by the lower left of the mixer. The first thing to do is to set all the faders from channel 1 to channel 4 and the master at unity to zero. This ensures each audio signal passes through the mixer at the same level. If two microphones are connected, each associated with one of the two cameras. Press the buttons beneath the channel 1 and channel 2 audio source control knobs to select each audio channel. Make sure the AV button is a light to ensure corresponding audio and video channels are tied together. All available video sources or inputs can be switched through the mixer's output in a variety of ways. The simplest way to mix is by having camera 1 selected on the main source row and camera 2 selected on the subsource row. By pressing cut, this will now switch camera 2 from the subsource row to the main source row, where its output will also be visible on the program screen of the multi-channel display and on the JVC program monitor. By pressing take, this will also switch camera 2 from the subsource row to the main source row but with a transition effect applied to the mix. Another way of mixing is by using the T-bar. This allows you to perform a manual mix, meaning that you can control the duration of the effect that has been selected for the switch. So that's basically it. By understanding how the video mixer is linked and configured with other devices within the studio, you'll be able to be more aware of how most of the equipment is used and interlinked with each other. But before I go, here are a few tips to take away. Ensure the correct mic is connected to the correct camera output shown on the main or subsource row. With the unit powered up and all the cameras and microphones connected, make sure the multi-channel display shows the correct setup on the screen. If you are using the T-bar to manually mix the video output, make sure it is correctly calibrated. For more information on how to calibrate the T-bar, 
ask the technician or your lecturer. Good luck!